man doesn't plant a tree for himself, he plants it for posterity. This according to Alexander Smith. Marty Cook, you a third generation farmer here in Lawrence County, South Carolina, just outside of Gray Court. And you've got a tree farm that's well known in the horticultural industry in South Carolina, but years ago, it was in cotton, corn, soybeans. Things have really changed in the Palmetto State, hasn't it? It, it has, Roland, and uh, I guess as the growth of the cities of Greenville and Columbia and Charleston have, have grown, we are felt the need to grow trees and plants uh, for the landscape industry. Well, horticulture is probably the leading area of agriculture in this part of South Carolina because there's such a demand for trees, and y'all specialize in trees, one specifically the oak tree. Now, you've got lots of oaks on this farm. Tell us about each one of them. Um, well, we're actually growing five different oaks. Um, willow oak, nut all, overcup, pin oak, and uh, sawtooth oak. And of course, the white oak and the pin oak, uh, they're very popular all throughout the Palmetto State. And a lot of gardeners are using these oak trees around the home landscape. They are, um, and in the commercial landscape too. Yeah. Well, what about uh, the sawtooth oak? Now, I know y'all have deer hunters in the upper part of South Carolina, just like we have them in the lower part of the Palmetto State. And the deer hunters are looking for a tree that provides lots of energy, lots of what we call total digestible nutrients, uh, lots of uh, uh, feed for the wildlife in the winter months and this sawtooth oak really has a big acre. It does. Um, it grows really fast too so that's, that's an attractive feature of it. Uh, so um, it does make good deer food. And yeah. you can always look at the leaf. It looks like a saw blade. I imagine that's where it got the sawtooth from. Didn't I, I would think so. It really looks different than all the other oaks but uh, it, it does have a real jagged uh, edge to it. Well, in a couple of years, you have some new trees on Marcus Cook Farms. You've got one with a yellow leaf. Now, what is it? Looks like it's chlorophyll deficient to me. <laughs> <laughs> we have fertilized it, but uh, it's a new tree that, that we've put in. It's called the Rising Sun, and it's a uh, red bud tree. Um, each year, we'll try to plant you know, a few different uh, new items, new uh, trees for our farm, you know, uh, and that's, that's one of the new selections we had this year. Well, what about the one with the deep purple color? What is it? That was another red bud, and they were planted right beside each other, I believe, and uh, that one's called Forest Pansy Red Bud. It's got a, um, a, a purple red foliage to it that uh, is on it all summer long during the growing season. Well, the tulip poplar is really gaining in popularity. It's kind of amazing to see how some of these trees come back in style, so to speak, and uh, uh, you've got these tulip poplars, and I think uh, a lot of people really enjoy them during the summer and also the fall months. It is a, a great shade tree, and it is a, a native tree, too. Um, it's a fast grower. Uh, it's got a large leaf on it, and, and it is a good tree. We've also planted a, a new tulip poplar that's uh, a columnar uh, tulip poplar. The leaves will, uh, excuse me, the branches grow more upright instead of horizontally. Now, Marty, y'all got one tree you call a London plane tree, and that's a new one to me. It didn't come from across the Atlantic Ocean, did it? I, it, it may have. I'm sure it did. And as far as I know, the uh, name of that tree came from a, a street uh, name, London Plain. Um, so that's a variety that, that has come here. Uh, I think it's in the sycamore family. Um, so it's a large growing deciduous tree. Well, you've got one elm here that you're particularly proud of. Tell us about the elms on Marcus Cook Farms. We're actually growing two elms, um, an American elm called Princeton elm. Um, it's um, resistant to the Dutch elm disease. Um, and then we're growing some Chinese elms. Um, we've got one by the name of Bosk. Uh, it's a little more upright um, and has a little more central, or more central leader than most of your Chinese elms. Marty, I know you have several varieties of crepe myrtles. I always enjoy driving up Highway 385 when the crepe myrtles in full bloom and I look on the left hand side of the road where Highway 92 crosses and uh, it looks like it's in full bloom every year during the June and July months. It is and um, we that's one of my favorite plants Roland. I love the crepe myrtle. Um, I think we're growing seven different varieties of crepe myrtle um, for different size reasons and for the color of their blooms also. 
And of course, she focused on those varieties that were developed at the National Arboretum in Washington, D.C. because they offer that resistance to that disease, powdery mildew. We do. We've got several of, of those varieties, and uh, some of those were the crosses between the indica variety and the farii variety, uh, and they are resistant to powdery mildew. Well, I know we've got some people who like to talk to you about Marcus Cook Farms. Y'all have been around quite a while, and you certainly have some quality plants. When you're not out in the field pruning and watering these trees, how can they reach you? Roland, you can reach us uh, on the web. Uh, you can look us up at uh, marcuscookfarms.com, uh, or you can reach us by phone at 864-876-2351. Well, thank you for letting Team Make It Grow visit with you, and the best of luck to you, your sister, and your family for your family farm here in the Palmetto State. Roland, it's good to have you. You're welcome here at any time.